So it's what, five to 10? Finally getting started. Endlich. Here we go. Start with the road walk from Chestnut to uh, Tear Bridges. There he goes, <laughs> speedy. Well, I can never pass up a birthday hike in the Cahada Wilderness. This is Tear Bridges Trail. Kind of obscure, hard to see with all the leaves. Here with my buddy Tim. And he ended up carrying his own pack weight, but he recently had surgery on his collarbone. And we were talking about going and he wasn't sure how the weight would feel. One of the things I told him I was able to do is carry all the gear for him and me. And it's not because I'm super strong, it's in part because we take a lot of ultralight gear. And I was just thinking about how that's one of the good reasons to do ultralight is so that you can take more. And what I mean by that is if your wife wants to go or a child or maybe a friend who's not a big backpacker wants to go, you know, you can take more of their stuff because you're not at your absolute limit if you carry a lot of lightweight gear. So yeah, one other reason to go lightweight is so you can take more for other people, help more people get out in the backcountry. Of course, in his defense, he is carrying his fair share because the hip belt takes all the load off the collarbone, but in a different circumstance, it might've been different. So get out there, folks, go exploring. Well, we got about half a mile to the Conestoga River, uh, heading downhill on Tear Bridges. And uh, even though it's November 4th, and we find out who our new president is tomorrow, <laughs> there's still a couple spiders, which surprised me. And there's still a good bit of thorns. I'm in shorts. i just not a big fan of hiking in uh, pants, unless it's really cold. I tend to choose uh, cuts by thorns rather than lots of sweat. <laughs> but this section is really nice. Nice place to come get a Christmas tree. Although it's about a three and a half mile hike to get here from the road. It was not super practical. But um, yeah, there's still a good bit of leaves that are pretty, but there's also quite a bit that are already off. Probably 10 days ago would have been ideal. Still beautiful. You made it. Good come on. Well, that's why I was just thinking I'd make a video. I mean, it is hard to explain this stuff in general. I mean, when, when people say, is it flat? I would say this is pretty flat compared to tear britches, yeah. but compared to Florida, this is like Mount Everest. Nine shots, see, das schaffst du nicht. Das schaffst du doch nicht. If I, if I say no, I get in trouble. Yeah. That's not good. Oh, let's capture this on film. <laughs> right. One is under, the other one's over. Yeah. <laughs> the umbrella's stuck. I seem to always catch on film my friends who have to do that maneuver. There's a thing poking out here. Oh, yeah. Under, I hit my head on it. Yeah, that's sometimes what you get in Kahara. All of these down trees, they really slow down your progress. But it's also part of the adventure. I mean, there are, of course, trails throughout America that have, you know, perfectly groomed trails, like in the national parks. You'll never step over a single log, but this is, after all, a wilderness area. And so a lot of people, including me, uh, like that. That extra level of adventure and ruggedness, hardiness. But it can be hard to describe to people what it's like. And so uh, if you're wondering, then maybe this helps you understand it a little bit. There are sometimes long sections that there's nothing in the way of the trail. And one tip is the further you get from the trailheads, the more likely you are to come across debris that hasn't been cleaned up because when the cleanup crews come through, you know, obviously they, they have to start at the car and they have to drag equipment like saws and things like that, axes, 
and so they uh, they get to the most interior trails last. Also, some of the trails are equestrian, so there's horses, and uh, the volunteers will bring horses with saws, and that allows them to travel faster, get more done. And then there are some trails that are not equestrian, and so those are often also the ones that uh, get the least amount of maintenance. So that's kind of obvious when you say it, but if you haven't thought about it, then then you don't necessarily realize that just when you look on a map. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes you have to zigzag like a switchback in order to get down. Otherwise, it's too steep to just go straight. No, that's yeah, the pace grinds really down something very, quite slow. It it really affects all your calculations for how much you can do and Hi Uncle Uncle Tim. How's the water? Yeah? Nice. Jack's River's kinda low today. There's almost a section here you can make it without stepping in the water, but I went lightweight, so no crocs for me, just barefoot. Nice and tidy section of Jack's River Trail. Almost to the waterfall to have breakfast. And this is a very high traffic area. Lots of good maintenance from the volunteers. Easy walking. And it's kind of fun being high up over the river. Get some nice views. This is always a exciting part of the little trek. Right around the corner here, you get to see what I would call the lower part. I don't know if there's official names for it. There it is. Jack's River Falls. And as usual, since it's a Tuesday, we have it to ourselves. One of the many advantages of being retired. Windy and warm. See the trail? Of course not. Because this is Hickory Ridge Trail. And it doesn't get much use. Super overgrown. I'm basically regretting being out here right now because I know what lies ahead. Dave, if you're watching, you know too. It is tough stuff. Rough Ridge is even more challenging. But Hickory Ridge will still beat you up. There's the trail. Oh, There's the trail up there. But we almost stepped on that guy. Well, Tim almost stepped on that guy. Looks non-venomous to me. But I think you should go first. Ah, uh, yes. Hickory Ridge. Such a joy. <laughs> Und? Gut gelaufen. <laughs> So it's not always uh, big trees that fall down that get in your way, it's these. I don't know if you can even tell, but, but you know what, the trail is up over there. <laughs> it's just a mess. Why don't I film you getting over this mess? Come on. Why? It'll look good. <laughs> Show everyone how, how oh, nice no. Hickory Ridge is. Oh. <laughs> this is your chance to look tough, not moan and groan. So what he's doing right now, we've probably done, I don't know, 80 times? Yeah. This type of thing, not on, not all on Hickory Ridge. Hickory Creek was, Hickory Creek was really beat up compared to how I've seen it in the past. And um, Tear Bridges had some of this. Rice Camp barely had any, Rice Camp was super tidied up. Nice job, 
our progress is super dismal. The wounds are adding up. Uh, in case you feel like commenting and saying you should have wore pants, uh, I did this on purpose. I've been on this trail three times before and suffered like this before and call me stupid or crazy, but I would rather have all those little cuts than just the, the heat, ow, that comes with hiking in pants. I just, I don't know, maybe, maybe someday I'll look back and change my mind and feel like I was an idiot, but uh, there's my friend up ahead is the same way. I don't know why, but anyway, you don't need to comment you should have wore pants unless you really want to and then, and then go ahead and do it. It probably helps the algorithm so I get more views on this channel. <laughs> um, yeah, this is, our progress is super slow and you just burn so many more calories. It seems like your body knows, like your body has this, your body can kind of tell you like, hey, we burned a lot of calories. And, and if you do a lot of hiking, then you say like, oh, for that amount of calories, I've probably gone three miles, but then you look and you've done like, you know, three quarters of a mile or something super discouraging. But, oh, that's really cool. Sometimes there's wasp nests in there. Learn that the hard way. They like the roof element of the branches. Yeah, anyway, uh, this is what Hickory Ridge is like uh, on November 5th, 2024. Oh, and if you're watching this, you probably know who got elected president, but I don't because today the results come in and I'm in the wilderness. Interessant. Oh, almost went down. Of course, these ridge trails aren't all bad. That one over there is Rough Ridge. That's a much more difficult one. I've been on it once before. It's um, one mile away from here to the east. It's a little bit taller and it's where the fire in 2016 hit so it's um there's more even more thorns and it's even less traveled so nice lunch break ready to go ready for a uh, 3.9 miles to go then we'll be at panther creek falls so this is the junction of hickory ridge let's call it north and hickory ridge south there's east cow pen and I've not been on this section of the trail in almost four years, uh, three years. So we're hoping this one is better. Hickory Ridge South is better than North. We're gonna find out. I feel like this is even less traveled, but I may be wrong. That's pretty on camera, actually, all these colors, these leaves coming into the camera. Easy, right, Tim? <laughs> the southern section of Hickory Ridge, uh, southern meaning between Panther Creek uh, Trail and East Calpen Trail, is uh, quite a bit better. It's still a bit overgrown, but there's not as many downed trees, and it's a good bit more flat. Uh, this is part of an old logging road, I think. So if you're watching this and kind of wondering the difference between the two, uh, we're almost done with this. We have like a quarter of a mile left on Hickory Ridge before we turn on to Panther Creek Falls heading southbound. So, uh, you know, it's not exactly sidewalk, but it's, it's considerably easier. And so if you're like me a few years ago where you went southbound on Hickory Ridge and then got to East Cowpen and was wondering if you should do, if you should bail and do East Cowpen or keep going south and go to panther uh information like this might be helpful to you that uh it's a good bit easier than the northern section of hickory ridge one of the best views perhaps the best view in all of the Cahuta wilderness is here from panther creek falls we're at the top of the falls that's all the water that's going down right now that's not the falls it's up and over the edge very very pretty Tim enjoying some Frito beans. <laughs> He's a, he loves being on camera, that guy. <laughs> this is my fifth time at Panther Creek Falls. 
The trail was in pretty good condition, just a couple of blowdowns, but this is a pretty popular destination, so it gets a lot of traffic. The Lonely Cloud. Yeah, that's true. It's pretty. Last light is in three minutes. There's only one campsite here at the edge of Panther and it's a little bit on an angle. What do you think of that angle? A little bit too much. Too much, a little bit too much, yeah. And uh, we did get a bit of rain, but of all the days to get rain, I'm glad it was this one because we're gonna be to the car in six miles. That was cool rock. Tim was sitting on that yesterday. Looks like the Porsche building in the Auto Autostadt. You know what the Porsche building looks like in, uh, in the Autostadt in Wolfsburg? It looks just like that, yeah. I mean, yeah, we're going this way, yep. Anyhow, it's not cold, thankfully. Uh, it's still really quite warm. I'm in shorts and a t-shirt, it's not bad at all. But we're not gonna sit around and drink a coffee. We're just gonna get on the road. It's still a beautiful view. Panther Creek Falls is not nearly as high volume as Jack's River, of course, but with some rain, I think it's about 70 feet, they say. Well, we're back to the Conasauga River Trail. Panther Creek was in pretty good shape, a couple blowdowns. And, you know, there used to be, I guess, that log. You could always get over here without getting wet. Last time I had to get wet, but it looks like some people have picked up and thrown some big boulders. So we were able to just rock hop across. Well, I was. Let's see if he can. Eh, footage is too boring. Some fun river crossings around here. Tim, uh, Tim didn't want to do this one, which I understand. Woo! But it's kind of fun. Well, we're on the Conasauga River Trail now, uh, south of Panther, and there's a lot of blowdowns. And I don't know if you can tell one here, there, 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 there. I mean, I can see six with the eye right here. So lots of damage to this trail. Heading up to Chestnut Lead and then out to the car. The last attempts at keeping the feet dry. <laughs> Unfortunately, your legs are shorter than mine. A little, little shorter, isn't it? The one you step on here moves. So this one? Yeah. I think it was that one that moved a little bit. Yeah, yeah gar nicht so yeah. schlecht. Oh, geschafft. Mehr oder weniger. Well, chestnut lead is steep, but nice and clear. Almost no blowdowns at all. Probably because it's a trail super close to the road. But as of this day in November the 6th, 2024, it's extremely well groomed and clear. Well, if you're anything like me, but when you get back to your car, you ask yourself, why do I do this to myself? <laughs> so difficult. <laughs> There's almost always a moment in my backpacking trips where I wonder, what am I doing out here? But a few weeks back in civilization and you're missing it. Last tip, leave yourself water, snacks, and a change of clothes in the car so you don't have to rely on it or go back home nasty, stinky. Even from the car, the views are gorgeous. Look at 